Okay, we're here. It's your good friend, Lukey, and this is the fight we've been waiting basically all year for. Uh, it's been a fantastic year of boxing, but let's get into the big fight that you're tuning in to get my analysis on, which is probably half-baked and not nearly as well-produced as others. But you're here, and I thank you for being here. This is the Errol Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford pay-per-view fight card breakdown, uh, along with a few other really great fights that we're going to get into in a second that you probably should... It's basically like the best week in boxing probably for the whole year. So when I look at Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford, everyone else is going to tell you the stories and the narratives. Who cares? You can go to their channels. You can get the feuds. You can get the cool catchphrases. Go to ProBoxTV.com slash news if you want to see my opinions on the press conference, all that stuff. I'm going to give you strictly boxing hot take. Me and Dakota have gone more into detail on this other stuff during the podcast. Very simple fight for me to look at. When you look at it, you know what Errol Spence wants to do. He's a, a pressure fighter, but he's not your average pressure fighter. He's not a choo-choo train that comes and just goes forward, forward, forward. Nope, that's deception. That's for le my man Bilal Mahasan. I see you. Level one thinkers think that Errol Spence is a pressure fighter. He's actually someone that sets traps takes a half step backwards, and then tries to punch with you when you overextend on your shots, he's going to come back with something hard. And then if you show any weakness or uh, effect from the shot, that's when he starts to ramp up that choo-choo train. That's when he starts to put the pressure on. But it all starts from his ability to create this maneuver, which is like a step back, almost like Bivol. He likes to pressure, pressure, pressure behind a good jab, Throw good punches, step back, throw a big hard shot. If that lands, that's when he starts to ramp up. It's a very effective style for him because he's a very strong guy. He's got good timing, and he's very underrated in terms of his skill set. Now, Sean Porter said something in the build-up to this fight where he said that he was surprised that Errol couldn't, wasn't making adjustments in the fight or wasn't thinking with him. And I think that that goes to the fact that Errol does one thing, but he does one thing extremely well. If you go hunting, sometimes just having a shotgun is the best weapon. You could have a Glock, you could have an AK-47, you could have a wrapper gun, but if you know what you have and you use it the way you're supposed to use it, that could be more effective than having 20 different pieces of utility. Spence is that. You know, Spence is that. Spence knows what he has, and... His an identity as a fighter is unchanged. Now we go to Terrence Crawford, one of the best fighters of this generation, three-division world champion, undisputed 140-pound champion. Uh, Crawford's one of the best. The big question with Crawford, Crawford can do everything Spence can do, and he does it better. I think nobody would argue that. Uh, maybe a couple of people would argue it, but they'd probably be wrong, in my opinion. Uh, Crawford is a great boxer. He's got the mentality of a fighter. He's very mean in the ring. He looks to prove a point. The big question to me about Crawford is, I know he weighs 175 pounds outside of camp, very strong, physically strong, amateur wrestler, uh, tough guy, but how will he take the physicality of Errol Spence? That is the X factor, because if this was skills for skills, I want the boxer. If this is uh, size versus size, I want Spence. So what makes this a 50-50 fight is both fighters have pathways to win. And that's what makes this such an exciting fight. It's for who's the best fighter since Floyd Mayweather in the welterweight division. It's for the undisputed championship. This is the type of fight that we need to get behind and support. Absolutely exciting. Co-main event, Isaac Pitbull Cruz is taking on Giovanni Cabrera. It's a solid fight. I think a lot of people are going to poo-poo it. I personally think Giovanni Cabrera is going to beat Isaac Pitbull Cruz. He's a very, very tricky guy. Pitbull's very aggressive, very tough, all gas, no breaks. But Giovanni is one of these guys where he has a style that only a mother can love. Kind of a Joey Maxim throwback boxer. It's not going to wow you. You're not going to go, oh my God, let me sit and watch the highlights. But Giovanni Cabrera is one tough cookie, one tough dude. And... He creates problems in there that not many fighters can create. He's a true spoiler. And this is gonna be a this is gonna be a very, very competitive fight. If Isaac Pitbull Cruz runs through Giovanni Cabrera, he is one of the best lightweights in the world because Giovanni Cabrera to me is a proven top ten level lightweight currently. 
We also have Nonito Donaire versus Alexandria Santiago for the vacant WBC bantamweight title. That's a very interesting fight. Why is it interesting? Well, Donaire's trying to break his own record. Donaire was a 40-year-old WBC bantamweight world champion. 38. Well, no, 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 no. Let me say that again. And I'm not editing this out. He was a 38-year-old bantamweight champion when he beat Nordine a couple years ago on Showtime Championship Boxing. Breaks the record. Now he's 40 years old. He wants to win the WBC bantamweight title again, break his own record, be a 40-year-old champion. Santiago, on the other hand, is a really high-motor guy, a guy who his record doesn't reflect how good of a fighter he is. I think he probably should have beat Jerwin and Canajas. He should have been a world champion. He didn't get the break. He's promoted by Paco Damien. To me, this is a real 50-50 fight. This is the classic everyone knows and loves Nonito Donaire. Nonito's trying to be great, but he's also fighting a really, really tough Mexican fighter who has a lot of go in his system right now. Man, is that scary right below me. I stay with the scariest stuff at the podcast studio. It is wild how scary the stuff in here is. Um, Opening bout. Sergio Garcia is fighting Teliz. I don't know much about Teliz. Sergio Garcia is one of these guys. He's had up and down performances. I mean, th- this is replacing a goofy heavyweight fight. So it was like, you're going to see a goofy heavyweight fight where two guys are going to punch each other and we're going to applaud it. And they're going to be very limited in terms of talent. Now, instead of a goofy heavyweight fight, we got two fighters that we don't really have much of an emotional attachment to. Let's be honest, most people outside of me and a few hardcores, they're not going to watch this fight. They're going to have it on the TV. They're going to be opening beers. They're going to be saying stuff. So if you care, you care. I believe uh, Tellez is trained by Ronnie Shields. Let's let's give him the good old college effort, college try. Let's see how he, how he does here. Tuesday, so the, not today, tomorrow morning, uh, very early on the West Coast, a little bit earlier on the West Coast, um, a decent-ish hour on the East Coast. We're going to have our guy, Nao Inouye, taking on Stephen Fulton Jr. Inouye is really looking... I think he's already a Hall of Famer. Uh, a lot of people have not enjoyed the fact that he's getting a lot of acclaim. Um, doing a lot of impressive things in the sense that he's going through these weight classes and kind of dominating with power and timing. To me, he is the modern remix of Nonito Donaire. What Nonito Donaire did 10 years ago is what Nao Inouye is doing right now. I just think that Inouye might have a little bit more dedication than Nonito had, but the same elite traits Nonito Donaire has is what Inouye brings to the dance. He has amazing timing. He has great power and great speed. Stephen Fulton's a very, very good fighter. He's one of the most underrated fighters in all of boxing. And it's very awesome that he took on this challenge to fight the best guy, the guy moving up. He, in a way, last year, bantamweight, undisputed world champion. Now he's moving up to face, in a way, big challenge. It's, It's hard for me to not look at the Brandon Figueroa fight against Stephen Fulton and see how Fulton responded in that fight. It really looked like that was a draw or maybe Figueroa had won that fight in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. And Figueroa is not the, he's an all gas, no breaks fighter. He's relentless. And there might be some issues about his recklessness that caused trouble for Fulton. But some of what Figueroa does in a way is going to do, but in a more calculated way. So though I think that a lot of people are very excited about this fight and I'm excited about this fight because it's two of the best fighters Currently, right now, I think that this is going to be a fight where we see how good Inouye is, and we also respect um, Fulton for taking this bout. Fulton, to me, kind of how I was going to compare him to a fighter right now, he kind of reminds me of a Kevin Kelly of past years. Uh, But I want to see Fulton step up and make a name for himself. I'm hoping this turns into a classic. My gut feeling, though, is that this might be one of these fights where in a way just proves just how friggin good he is uh, because Fulton has shown stylistically. Sometimes he has trouble with a physical, a physical style. Even in the Angelo Leo fight at times, he showed a little, little bit of stuff on the inside that I wasn't absolutely loving, but maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. So you, you can make fun of my hairline. That scary thing is right behind the camera too. I, I would turn it, but 
Um, I don't want to scare you, but I swear I see the scariest stuff in here. Uh, ESPN, the day before Friday, uh, ESPN Plus, we got Sinise Estrada. I love a little Sinise Super Bad Estrada. She's probably my favorite boxer in the sport of boxing right now, currently. Uh, super, super big fan of Sinise Estrada. Women's boxing version of Roy Jones Jr., in my opinion. Um, phenomenal fighter. Unique in the gifts that she presents to the ring. I think that we very rarely see a fighter who has as much athleticism as talent. And then I think what makes her interesting as well is she's a great color commentator. So she can evolve in the sport. On top of being the most dominant women's boxer I feel currently along with Clarissa Shields. She's also growing with us as a personality to guide us through the action. I think it was a brilliant move, not just by Top Rank, but by ESPN as well, to pick up Sinise because she's a valuable asset if you want to invest in women's boxing. Because I truly feel that people don't understand the influence that she is leaving in the sport and how influential she is to young women. Seeing her, she's a very dignified fighter who deserves a main event spot like this. And it's really, really awesome to see Estrada getting treated like the star that she is. Uh, Co-feature, I love this one. Andreas Cortez, Xavier Martinez, both have been supporters of the, your man, Lukey. Xavier Martinez, I've known him since Guy Robb. You know, I remember being, when Guy Robb fought Miguel Mariaga, Xavier was wearing his TMT jacket. We were in the back of a tent in Fallon, Nevada. Um, he's no longer with Ray Woods, but, you know, life happens, you know, and it is what it is. Um, you don't want, life doesn't, there's something coming close to me, but life doesn't always afford you the loyalty or the, the things you think one day, like you can, you can see someone that's green in boxing when they're like, man, I'm going to be loyal to everybody for the rest of my life. And that, that to me tells me someone's new to the game because they haven't gotten burned yet because it's not, boxing's a game where it's not a matter of if you're going to get burned, it's when you're going to get burned. That's boxing. So Xavier Martinez, not that he got burned by anybody or anything, just people fall out. You know, he's trained with Wade Woods, loses to Hobson, Consacow, gold medal Olympian, really great fighter. I'm high on Hobson. Well, he's trained with Robert Garcia now. He's with Rick Merigian, really good manager. And um, now he's in with Andreas Cortez. Andreas Cortez, basically what a lot of people thought Xavier Martinez was. Guy who hits hard, signed with Mayweather Promotions, now with top rank. These are two people that are looking at each other that are the mirror images of each other. Two hard workers, two big punchers, two fighters that really should go into this fight and feel if they win this fight, this is a wide open division at 130 pounds, and a win here can catapult you into the conversation of getting a fight possibly with Oscar Valdez and Emmanuel Navarrete. And if that doesn't get you motivated as a fighter, I don't know what will. Another fight I'm excited about on this card is Carlos Balderos versus Nahir Wu Albright. I've been a big fan of both of these fighters. Nahir Wu Albright had an outstanding 2021. That already seems like that's a little bit longer ago than it should be. Wu Albright is just one of these tricky Philly fighters who's very capable of doing a lot of different things in the ring. Carlos Balderos was one of the best amateurs I've ever seen in my life. He just hasn't fully put it together as a pro. I'm still waiting for that moment for my guy King Carlos to really, really show us everything he's capable of in the ring. This is a prove-it fight. Nahir Albright is a very tough customer. Carlos Balderos now training with Robert Garcia. I'm curious to see if Carlos can kind of take that next step up because Carlos is getting to that point where he's going to have to start taking on some formidable challenges. And this is his first big test in the division. Also, be sure to check out my guy, Charlie Sheehy. Absolute phenomenal young person and a role model to any and all. And let me see if there's anybody else that I'm missing right now on this card. Oh, Rohan Polanco is taking on our guy, Caesar Francis. That's a pro box fighter. Um... Caesar Francis, really good boxer. Rohan Polanco uh, being promoted, I believe, by Fighters First Management. This is just one of these 50-50 prove-it fights. Caesar, basically, I thought he won his last fight on Pro Box, but he got outworked. Now he's coming back, and he's he's the B-side. You know, you don't win a fight, now you're the B-side. So that's a fight worth knowing about. And let's see if there's anything else that um, you should care about. That's basically it. 
so that there it is. It's one of the shorter videos I've made. Do you like it when I keep it shorter? Subscribe to the channel. Um, tell me I'm ugly. All that stuff. I'll be live after the pay-per-view. So tune in.